Welcome to the clinical scenarios and this is your question number 40. Here we have a 33 year old man who is coming to the office due to the painful swelling of the right lower eyelid for the past two days. He has no trauma or history of any similar symptoms in the past. So they have given you the negative history. There is nothing related to the trauma, nothing significant in the past. Now the patient says that he has visited his niece who was having an upper respiratory tract infection. So they are having an exposure to the foci of infection. He has no significant prior medical problems other than occasional episodes of herpes labialis. Now, what is this indicating? The patient has occasional episodes of herpes labialis means that there is decreased immunity of this patient and he is actually labile to infections, is prone to repeated infections. He is sexually active with his girlfriend who takes the oral contraceptives. Temperature is 36.8. BP 130 by 80, pulse is 80 per minute. Now examination of the right eye shows the localized swelling along the margin of the lower eyelid with associated erythema and tenderness. I hope this is a very very important line and you are able to judge what they are trying to say. They are saying that there is some localized swelling. So when I am saying that there is a localized swelling, so that means it is indicative of some eyelid infection, right? So there is some eyelid infection, it is localized in the lower eyelid and it is along the margin with erythema and tenderness. So you have signs of, signs of acute inflammation. Now because we have got signs of acute inflammation, we have the foci of infection and we have decreased immunity, that means this person is suffering from the uh, hordulum. Hordulums are always, you know, acute in onset and they are pustular. Now most probably I can say that this is an external hordulum or a sty because they are saying it is along the margin but still we cannot say with 100% surety that whether it is an external hordulum or an internal hordulum but uh, it is a hordulum because this patient was having exposure to the upper respiratory tract infection so there was a foci of infection this person has recurrent episodes of herpes lapialis so therefore immunity is low this this patient is having acute onset, we have got uh, signs of inflammation, we have erythema, we have tenderness. So this is not a chronic condition, this is an acute condition. Now there is no conjunctival injection or discharge. Why they have given this? Because you may get confused with the keratitis also. But they are saying that there is no discharge. There is no conjunctival injection. So no keratitis. That means this patient is not having the keratitis. And they are saying that the visual acuity of this patient is normal. Now again this is suggestive that this is not uh, other causes of acute red eye. Like we can have the uveitis, we can have keratitis because those patients will be presenting with the diminution of vision. Left eye appears unremarkable, other eye is absolutely fine. Which of the following is the most appropriate initial management of this patient's current condition? Now again an important thing they are not asking you the best management. They are just asking you the initial management that you should give to this patient to start with. Now we are knowing that this patient is having some kind of hordulum whether it is external or whether it is internal does not make a difference in our uh, treatment per se. Okay, whether it is internal, whether it is external, we are going to give the uh, antibiotics, we give the both topical as well as we give both topical as well as the systemic antibiotics. Both of them can be given, right? 
any of the antibiotics we can give then we have to give the anesthetics lot of uh, you know uh, you, this uh, erythema is there tenderness is there signs of inflammation is there and then we have to do the hot fermentation we have to do the hot fermentation now they are saying what should be given initially okay so let's see the options the options are erythromycin ointment usually uh, the erythromycin ointment we are not giving for the lit infections right this is giving for the um, keratitis especially which is caused by the chlamydia or that is trachoma so here we do not have any signs and symptoms of trachoma the follicles or we have got the uh, sago grain follicles we have got the uh, this um, papillary hyperplasia or we have alts line or we have got the concretions or we have got the herbert follicles and herbert pits the pannus so erythromycin ointment is not required now look at the second option incision and curettage this is actually the treatment of choice and uh, this treatment of choice is for the callezion this is the treatment of choice for the cases of the callezion and callezion is a chronic lipogranulomatous inflammation while the condition which is given in this question is a acute onset it is it is having erythema it is having tenderness so it is not a condition of the chronic lipogranulomatous inflammation for which we give the incision and curettage now look at the option number c the topical gencyclovir so these are your antivirals so obviously antivirals will be given in the cases of viral keratitis now it is not a case of viral keratitis it is not a case of keratitis even because they say that there is no discharge okay here they were saying that there was no conjunctival injection no ocular discharge moreover when we are talking about the viral keratitis i should have the kps i should have the decreased corneal sensations then um, uh, very very typical dendritic keratitis so nothing of that sort is given here so it's not a case of the viral keratitis so no use of giving the topical gencyclovir now look at the option number d warm compresses yes we can go with the warm compresses yes see this we give the antibiotics we give the anesthetics and we give the hot fermentation so initially what can i do i can start up with the warm compresses now if you are confused between the erythromycin ointment because i told you that we also give the uh, antibiotics both the topical as well as the systemic so here you should know that these uh, audiolums are most commonly caused by the staph so for that we are not uh, typically giving the erythromycin ointment we are giving the broad spectrum antibiotics and that too in the drops form moreover they are asking you the initial so sometimes what happens that when you give the warm compresses because most of the time we have a pustules a small pustule which is pointing uh, towards uh, out on the outer side of the lit margin if it is external audiolum or away from the lit margin slightly if it is a internal audiolum so if you are doing the warm compresses in a fine manner you are doing the hot fermentation then what happens this pustule is released and the pus is drained so that will help us in settling down the inflammation very very soon and um, even the drug starts acting in a more efficient manner after that so that is why the initial treatment will not be erythromycin ointment initial treatment we will go with the warm compresses so i hope the answer to this question is very clear moreover you have understood this uh, the uh, clinical acumen and the approach how to go through these questions because you know these are such kind of a questions where very clear cut diagnosis they have not given you they have given you a hint that these are the possibilities okay now in these questions you don't have to make the diagnosis you have to just follow the question and see what they are asking if you start making the diagnosis 
obviously that will become difficult for you because they have not given you the specific thing for diagnosing whether it is an external hordulum or whether it is an internal hordulum. So that clinical, clinical acumen that you develop is very very important and the art of reading the question in such a way that you get the thing what is asked in this question by the examiner every time is not interested to make a diagnosis from you. They are just trying to find out whether you know the approach how to go about that question that is also working fine so in in cases of any doubt you can always ping me up at any of my social media platforms you can follow me on the instagram be a part of our huge family on the facebook group and the telegram group and also participate daily in the quizzes that we are conducting thank you and happy ophthalmology